guitar, so you were repairing like mandolins and guitars and stuff like that. Right. Like, teaching and just guitar? Te and teaching guitar on the side. Okay. Um, and I built a lot of dulcimers. Dulcimers were really popular back now, then. Now, what kind of Appalachian or hammer dulcimers? Appalachian dulcimers. Okay. okay. Out of walnut and bird's eye maple, curly maple, and, uh, and some electric guitars. I built those too back then. And um, everything was very secretive. In fact, I was talking to Richard Hoover of Santa Cruz today about that. He remembered, too, that time period where, where there was only a few books on repair out there. Um, Irving Sloan and Kamamoto and very few. It was very secretive. And, and the big companies were secretive on the tours. You know, you were not allowed to take cameras in there. And the old guys didn't want to teach you any tricks. And, you know, so you just had to really figure out things on your own and uh, which I did and just just doing it all the time so why do you think they didn't <clears throat> want to teach you is just to keep the mystique about it yeah or it's, it's the old um, artist guild thing where yeah. they, you know you could and they didn't even want to take apprentices you know they just See, which, that's odd like they want to keep it secret but they don't take a you know because old like the artist guild but they don't want to take apprentices right it seems very closed off uh, well, it was. It was very, hmm. um, very secretive. Um, whereas the newer generations, like uh, all the, the companies that came out of the mid '70s, which hmm. would be PRS, Taylor, Santa Cruz, um, those guys were all very communicative. You know, if one of them would find out, Kim Breedlove was in there, Stelling banjos, Hudson Dalton, all those people all tied together somehow. Um, and, and they would talk to each other, and, and they're still like that. I mean, the, I shouldn't mention names here, but some of these big companies actually help each other out now. They've, they've kept that hippie philosophy, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we've heard that, because we've interviewed a few of those guys, and, and I think one of them, I, I think it was either Richard Hoover or one of them, and they said, you know, among the acoustic guitar manufacturers, there really are no secrets. Right, they, they actually go to the other guy's factory and say, Hey, you having problems with this? I'll show you how to do it. Yeah. Or come to my place and and you try out the equipment, see if you like it before you yeah. buy. It. Yeah, it's like that's cool. But that's yeah, that's the hippie f thing, which <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, you're like. I guess that's why it's acoustic guitars. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I guess. And and that's so different than it was back in the '60s or something like that. So um, so it's it's kind of neat. And, and the bar has been raised, you know, the quality of everything's gotten so much better, of everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the finishing, the fretwork, obviously the wood cutting, sourcing supplies, uh, of course the internet's helped a lot with that. Yeah. Repairs have gotten to be uh, wonderful. I mean, like I have my methods, but I'm always willing to learn and uh, get these uh, things come over in the emails or people talking. and. I got a finishing guy came in the other day, and he just gave me all kinds of pointers. You know, just hey, you know, try this. Why don't you try that? You know, something yeah. like that, and gave me phone numbers and stuff. And and I do that sometimes. People want something that I don't really want to deal with, or so I just tell them where to get it from, so they can get their own supplies and start out. So it's I think that all came out of the the '60s movement. I think. So to go back a little bit, you know, you said you made a, a lot of dulcimers. Uh huh. What inspired you to make dulcimers among? And did you make other things or just dulcimers? Um, dulcimers, auto harp, um, lots of repairs. Remember, I was. It's different being a repairman from a builder. It's hard to do them both. Yeah. I had a lot of energy being back in the tw in my twenties. Because if you're a repair guy, you're dealing with people, walk-ins coming in, you know, things that have to be done by the next day and stuff like that. And it's hard to really concentrate on building something. Like I said, I did electric guitars, and in the, I guess it was mid-70s, something like that, um, I was Schechter's third largest dealer of parts, back with the, through the brass craze. And they had the biggest one was, I think, in New York and London, England, was their European distributor in, and I was. And uh, Herschel Blankenship, who was the head of it at the time, flew into Lexington, Kentucky, where I am. 
he was expecting to see this big shop, you know, with all these people. And it was just me in the basement. <laughs> and it's like, but I really believed in the product, and I was just putting on stuff and making brass nuts and um, doing all kinds of customization, which probably has to be undone now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to put the stuff back original. But I didn't mess up any good 50s stuff. I had respect for that yeah. from the beginning. Uh, so, yeah, I lived through all that. And it, like I said, the repairs and playing in the band, all that. So, so the building finally stopped because I was just doing too much. Yeah. And when I got my degree from school, I, which was in social work, I, I did that for a while. And doing the music on the side. I said, well, I can't do everything. And then that had to go. <laughs> and then eventually ended up you know, retailing, creeping in. But I always did repairs. And yeah, I did some building after that, but it's just, I mean, just so many hours in the day. And yeah. So it sounds like you, what you built was kind of inspired by the vintage instruments you had been collecting. Right, it was very, it was earthy. Remember, this is like yeah, 60, the '60s, okay. you know. Like, so you had like an oil finish on a doll spring. This is not high gloss nitro <laughs> stuff, you know. But I did do uh, pearl inlays and wood carving. I still have some of them I bought back that carved heads on the doll spring, you know, lady's head or something. Neat stuff. Wow. So this is a lot of fun. Uh, one dulcimer was in fine woodworking. Was, uh, designed. Catalog one, I think it is, which was a very prestigious thing to be chosen for that. Wow! Back in the old days. And what publication was that? Again? I think it was Fine Woodworkings Magazine. Oh, okay. Uh, Design Book One. It's like they're uh, the best of the year. So that's, this isn't just instrument woodworking. This is woodworking. Everything. Yeah. So that's that was uh, a real compliment. Yeah, that is prestige. Yeah. Um, and now, like I said, I mean, I'm still work on the bench every day but I'm into retailing so I've got my iMac there and watching the emails and following the trends. So.